and Spoons, welcome back to another video where pain recognizes pain. Um, I know I owe you guys an explanation. Right now I'm working through something going on in this left eye. I had said, if you follow me on Instagram, um, if you don't, that's fine. I don't push my social medias. I feel like it's, I don't know, I just, I can't yet. Maybe someday, probably never. Um, but if you do, then you know that one, I moved from Florida to Colorado, and two, I said I wasn't going to put makeup on today. I said expect a broken woman, and then my vain ass self put makeup on, and now my eyes are running and irritated when I should have just gotten on here because we both know I'm going to cry this shit off, right? So I don't want to make this a four-hour video. I truly, truly don't. I'm sitting on my floor um, in front of this really cool firebox that I got from the Salvation Army and repurposed. I'm kind of in love with it. That's why I'm sitting in front of it. But here's the explanation. I'm gonna go into a little bit of our move. I'm gonna go into a little bit of the health stuff that followed because it maybe, maybe not, we don't, we don't know, but might have ignited a firestorm of neurological shit. <laughs> so my husband works for a company that has uh, a, a location both in Florida and in Colorado. There's other locations throughout the country. And they knew that he, my, my husband's a, a country boy at heart. He grew up in Indiana. He wanted to leave. He signed up for, he graduated and signed up for the U.S. Air Force at 17 years old. He was like, bye, small town, out. Um, now, as an adult, he knows everything that he missed. He loves it. So we've got 35 acres here. Um, and I had never been ready before because when you have chronic illness, especially chronic pain, look, let's be honest, it's just you and me here and the very few people who watch my videos. <laughs> and I love every one of you for doing it. I'm on a lot of pain medication. So moving states, moving medical providers, none of that, none of that was easy or um, felt uncomplicated to me. You know, it felt like this Herculean task to move. The neurologists, the rheumatologists, the PAs, the, um, just the, uh, just the, the gastrointestinal doctors, all of these doctors that I have to go and, and, and switch, uh, pain management, all of it. And it's so, it felt so Herculean, but for some reason, and throughout the 20, 23, 24 years that my husband and I have been together, I've never been ready to move. I'm a settler. He's a wanderer. He is a wanderer. And um, I've never felt ready to move. And finally, you know, our son is going to be 23 this year. He's at an age where we were like, we cannot revolve our lives around our child. It's just not what you're supposed to do. So we decided yeah, let's move. And I contacted some providers out here right away. There's a great network where the only doctors that aren't in my network are my pain management specialists, my rheumatologist, but everybody else is in the network. Um, I found that, you know, after 14 years, let's call it, let's call it eight years. I've been diagnosed for 14 years, but let's always call it eight years because eight years is when the pain drove me to go finally see the doctor. So eight years, these doctors have been trying to figure out what's going on. And understandably, they're getting tired and frustrated. You know, I love my neurologist more than anything. He had a bedside manner that was so comforting and so calming. And, you know, even when he was stabbing me with Botox injections, he was just so, such a joyous man. But I know that the lack of answers for him was getting discouraging. Even knowing, even having told me there's only less than 10% of the brain that we know, and that 10% is so, what we know is so minuscule, I could just tell that he was so disheartened to see a woman that at the beginning was 32 and is now 40, still going through the same things. So the good news is the doctors I found out here kind of seem rejuvenated. Also, side note, when you move, when you live in Southwest Florida, let's start when you live in Southwest Florida, you fight. 
I feel like Aaron from The Office. You fight everybody. You fight for rheumatologists. You fight for neurologists. The only person you don't fight for is to get your pap smear. But it's the area of old people. So all of these arthritic conditions, you are fighting to get your appointments here. They're like, sure, come on in. I'm like, well, who me? You want to see me? Like ankylosing spondylitis with comorbid Ehlers-Danlos system. I don't like some kind of medical thing here where they're like, what? Sure, let's find out what's wrong with you. I mean, they're going to find out. That <laughs> I'm just excited for people to be excited to help me. Plus, if you are somebody who apologizes to inanimate objects like I do, Colorado is filled with people like that. I found my people. Everybody here is so nice. Okay, so that covers the move. You know, that very reductively covers the move. Um, but we lived in an extended stay for two months while well, my husband was working. Hold on, there's a hair between my lips that I'm gonna fix. So hold on a moment, please. And we're back with no hair. Um, so it very reductively covers the move, but we were in an extended stay for two months while we had to find a house. And we thought coming out of the Florida housing market, we're like, we've got this. The Florida housing market is like, I'm sorry guys, my eyes have not adjusted. They don't know whether to be watering or dry like SpongeBob um, outside of the water. Either way, uh, we thought the Florida housing market was going to be easy. Like we got through Florida, we can get through Colorado. No, wrong. Every house we went to look at was under contract. I mean, this stuff is moving so quickly. So um, I was doing a lot of work from the extended stay. In the extended stay, we had two beds and the most uncomfortable chair you've ever sat in. So I was uncomfortable a lot. I was stressed out a lot because I was dealing with the sale of a home in Florida and the purchase of a home in Colorado. And I've told you this before, but I'm a paralegal, which means when I'm going through the title company's documents, and they haven't gotten it right, and I have to correct them. Now I feel like I have to search every single line, you know? And that's what happened. The title company sent over a document where they didn't pull in information. They didn't review it, and I had to tell them. So now I'm on everybody. I'm on our, our Florida agent. Kids, when you sell a house, this is all the stuff that happens. Sell and buy. So I'm on my Florida agent. And then here in Colorado, we have our financing agent and we have our real estate agent. So I'll insert pictures. But while I was staying at the extended stay, I had an episode. I had a seizure. Um, I will insert the pictures. I usually do. I take pictures of all of my injuries simply because they record their records for the doctor. Um, same as, as the usual ones, but in tongue, not so bad with the scratch face, very bad pain. You can tell that my body had been cramped. So we go to the neurologist and the neurologist says, well, you're on this one medication and one of the side effects is seizures. Let's wean you off of it. I don't want to be on a medication that's causing seizures or mini strokes. Let's go. So we wean off that medication. This is going to be the hardest point to tell, and I'm going to really try to do it without crying because it's not fair to you guys. You don't want to listen to a snotty mess, but I had a different kind of episode, and, and I'm, I want to talk to you about this because if you've had this kind, um, I'd, like to, I'd like to hear about it and know about it because it, it was scary. I remember... I'm going to start with what I remember because this is the first episode where I have remembered portions, but the portions, the, the little bits and pieces that I can grab onto are also hallucinations. We had our dog beds in, for, the, for the puppies um, by the table in the extended stay. And I've had a lot of time to think on this because, let me just say, I woke up in the dog beds. I was laying in the dog beds. And what I thought, I, you know, I'm laying there and I think that I'm looking through a window and I can see my husband's feet get out of the Jeep like he's coming home from work. Of course, I can't see that because I'm laying on the floor. 
And I think what I'm looking through are the legs of the chairs at the table. And it kind of looked like window panes to me. I remember that. Um, I don't remember after that. I remember nothing after that. Until in, until a conversation with my lending agent where the lending agent says, I don't think the house is going to appraise. If you know anything about houses, they have to appraise for what your mortgage is or you don't get the house. So I'm like, what? How could this be? You've told me from the beginning it's going to appraise. We're going to, you know, everything's fine. We're going to get the house. We got this going. Let's go. And she's like, it's not going to appraise. I'm telling you. So then I pick up the phone and I call our real estate agent. And the realist, I call her and I'm like, the lender just said the house isn't going to appraise. I don't know what's going on. This is not what a phone looks like anymore. This is how you can tell when somebody's old if they do this with their hand. Okay? No. Um, I'm like, it's not going to appraise. What's going on? She's like, hold on. I'll call her. I'll call the lending agent and I'll call you back. Perfect. She calls me back. She's like, so um, you're fine. You don't have to worry about it. And I'm like, well, what do you mean we're fine? She's like, no, you just, you, you don't have to worry about it. And I was like, no, I need you to tell me what you mean by you're fine. She's like, the house is going to appraise. I was like, well, what about Michelle? And she went quiet. And it was at that moment that this like light bulb went off. And I went, Tammy, because Tammy was the name of our agent. I need you to tell me right now, did the lending agent call me? And she went silent again. And I said, Tammy, <laughs> I need you to tell me if she called me. And she said, no, she didn't call you. So in, <clears throat> who I got through that without crying so far. So in this hallucinogenic seizure, neurological episode, I assume that I laid down. I'm hoping that I felt something come on simply because my body did not feel like it had fallen. In fact, it did not feel like a normal seizure. Like usually my, my, my calves are so cramped up and my, my forearms, you can't see my forearms are so, I burn myself. Like I can't feel my arms. Um, you know, my forearms are so cramped up because what I assume is we're doing this. Um, and I didn't have those feelings. It didn't hurt like I would have fallen down. So I'm hoping that maybe I felt uneasy and thought bed and went dog bed. Good enough. Um, it's the first episode that I've remembered. I found a plate of Panda Express that I had thrown, just chucked into the back of the fridge, like food all over the back of the fridge. I found coats all over the floor. Um, yeah, it was general chaos. You could tell. I don't know how long I was hallucinating. I don't know how long I was in a state of confusion. But I can tell you honestly that remembering it is worse than not. For me, at least. For me. Remembering. Remembering those parts. Having to. This is where I'm going to lose it. Okay. Having to apologize to people. Because I had to apologize to my lender and to my realtor. You know. I have to explain to them. Why. This magic conversation that never happened. Is being made up in my mind. That's a hard conversation. Um, luckily, they were wonderful about it. Absolutely, positively wonderful about it. But it is not an easy conversation to have to have to say, this is what I'm going through. This is what my brain is going through. I don't know why I think we have this conversation. Yeah, it was difficult. It was really, really difficult. So, um, ugh, let's get this, let's get this taken care of. I'll be right back. I'm sorry, I just don't want to be a crying, sobbing mess. I really wanted to, to have a conversation with you guys and talk about where I've been and what's been going on. So the neurologist says, oops, sorry. The neurologist says, all right, we have a problem. <laughs> and here's the thing, folks. When you're on handfuls of prescription medication, 
not only are they trying to find a biological reason, like in your own body without external chemicals, a reason why this might be happening, they have to go, what about all these chemicals we're putting in? What one of those 300 pills you take a day might be a problem. So we're kind of throwing, um, throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. We're at that stage and I have to go to Denver, which is about an hour away from where I live now. And I have to go to the hospital <laughs> for a five day inpatient stay where I can't move on my own. I can't potty on my own. I can't do any of this. They basically, they basically watch me 24 seven for five days. I will probably be hooked up to an EEG. I can't imagine that it's just not, I think I'm going to be hooked up to an EEG. I had a sleep study. Oh my goodness. The sleep study. It was a sleep deprived sleep study, right? They're like, you can only get four hours sleep. I'm like, bitch, if I get four hours of sleep, it's a great night. So, but, but I, I don't know when I'm going to get it. So I have to stay up until I can get four hours of sleep. And then I go in and I'm laying in a hospital bed and she's like, if you could go to sleep, that would help the study. I'm like, my body is rebelling from the inside out. The, the, the position I'm in on my back in a hospital bed, I'm like, you're going to get somewhat somewhat still that's what you're going to get because most of the time I'm shaking. I'm having to keep from rocking back and forth as to not give you vertigo because what I want to be doing is this. This is what I do all the time. Um, so five day study. I have to go do that. We make the appointment. The appointment can't be until February 1st. So two months of figuring this out. And then in the, in the in-between, I'll insert another picture. I start bleeding from the ear. Not, and I have no ear infection. I have nothing. And, and not like, oh, you put your Q-tip in and you have a little scab, scab in your ear and you might have ripped it and there's a little bit of blood. I happen to go, why does my head feel wet? Like I, I looked over at my husband and I'm like, my head feels wet. And I picked my head up from the pillow and there was blood coming out of my ear. I'll put a picture of the pillow because uh, I took a picture and ordinarily would not frighten me, but put together with all the, the, the other symptoms, not great. I'm hoping that now that we have relocated, we're in our home, we are able to take a little bit of that pressure off that possibly this might calm down. Um, the pain management doctors here in lovely Colorado, opioids, because one, they are covered by my insurance and two are another form of battling my pain, um, have been a part of my pain management program, but so has medical marijuana. The pain management doctors in Colorado do not want you using medical marijuana. So right now that's the biggest issue because, you know, I looked at, I looked at my neurologist because I promised my husband that I would be honest. And I looked at my neurologist and I'm like, these people have never met me. They've never met the me that's like, I'm okay, I'm fine, it's not a big deal, I got this, we're good, let's move on, chugga 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 choo choo choo, chugga 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 chugga, fine, fine, you know, like we do, they don't know me. So I looked at my neurologist and I finally said, if somebody came to you and said, I woke up this morning in my shoulder and my shoulder, my, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm in a loop now because my brain fog is sitting in. If you if you had a patient that walked in and said, I woke up this morning and my shoulder was dislocated, my middle finger was dislocated, and three of my toes were dislocated, you'd be like, that's a lot of pain to be in. That's an average morning. Then couple it on top of, my legs are buckling, I feel like there's gravel in my spine, um, my eyes stick to my eyelids and they're ripping my corneas, um, my... <laughs> My spine is fusing together. 
all of my joints are now sliding. As I've come, I, as I've become older, I've realized that the ankylosing spondylitis is bad, but the Ehlers-Danlos, that loosening of my connective tissue, it's not good. And all my joints are sliding around. I'm like, if you, if somebody came to you with all these different, and they're like, oh, and I'm having strokes. Oh, and I'm having seizures. Biting parts of my tongue off. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. I'm hallucinating. Um, you know, all this pain. I can't walk up a flight of stairs. I had to army crawl up our front stairs. I can't walk up a flight of stairs. I can't go to the store and walk from the, the from the, the parking lot to the store. Like, if anybody, if somebody told you one of these things, you'd be like, that's a lot of pain. This is every day. It's an oppressive weight that is on us. It never leaves. I told her, I said, I get maybe three hours, maybe on a good day, because if my pain, if my medication to let me go to sleep will work, I will get about three hours. But then when it, when it wanes, that pain wakes me up and that monster's there and it is clawing at me, just absolutely clawing at me. <sighs> Whew. I feel like I talked a lot. <laughs> I feel like I talked a lot. Um, so this is where we are. I'm really trying to convey it to my doctors. I'm like, you know, when, when I don't have that medical marijuana, imagine a rubber band just stretched to its possible limit, just stretched until it can't be stretched anymore. And then you take some of that tension off. That's what medical marijuana, on top of the fact that I can eat sometimes. The universal, the universal fuck you to me is that I don't eat. And I'm still fat. That is the universal fuck you. Either way, sometimes I can eat. But I'm like, if you take that, that rubber band and you can just release some tension every once in a while, then when you pull it back, it'll have rested. It'll have recuperated a little bit. I'm like, you're, you're... I can't. I can't. Ugh. Either way. This is where we are. Um, to go back to our home. We love our home. We just, it's, it's interesting adjusting to country life. It's interesting adjusting to making sure you have things because it is a 40 minute round trip to the grocery store. Um, but I really, really love it here. I'll insert some pictures that I've taken. I really love it here. I have a lot of stories. I haven't talked to you about my social security hearing. Um, I really want to talk about the relationship with my family because my family is back in Florida. Um, there's a lot that I want to talk to you about, a lot that I've kept bottled up, but I wanted to get something out to you guys just to say, hi, I'm here. This is why I was gone. And um, hopefully I'll be able to make more consistent videos because uh, we have a room now, a dedicated room now. It's a craft room and a filming room. I'm sitting in our living room because my craft room is full right now. But once we move all that aside and create a corner, then I'll be able to have everything set up and it won't feel so exhaustive pulling everything out and putting it all together to do videos. So also I won't put fucking makeup on like an idiot. Either way, I just, I hadn't done anything for so long. You don't want to hear it. I love you guys. Just remember that pain recognizes pain always. And I see you. I will always see you. And thank you for sticking with me. Even when I can't upload, even when it takes a long time, even when I cry and snot and go through all of that, thank you for sticking with me. The fact that there are over a hundred of you that are willing to listen to me talk and snort and commiserate about the amount of pain that we're in and how strong we are, it's a really beautiful community and I'm thankful for each and every one of you. So I love you guys and I'll see you next time.